testing, testing. Are you recording? All right, I think we're good. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, I'm so glad you're here, whether you know me from acting, photography, whether you don't know me at all and you just found this video and you wanna learn more about food photography, well, you're in the right place. I think the mailman's here, dadgummit. So anyways, basically the whole reason for doing this video is that I've had a few people asking me if I wouldn't mind sharing some uh, tips and tricks behind the scenes, etc. a little bit of what I know. Um, honestly, I've just been lazy so far and I haven't done it. But I think with the current situation um, of COVID and that crazy world we're living in, um, if I can share a little bit of what I know and it makes someone happy, if it teaches anything, whatever the cause, if it just uh, brightens your day, then that's what I want to do. So um, sorry it's taken so long, but this should be an ongoing thing, I'm hoping, if you guys respond right. Um, video quality sounds probably not that great today, just using this Zoom H1. Um, don't have my lav mic with me or anything like that, and I'm just here alone, so I might not even be in focus, but I think you'll get the gist. Um, so enough of me babbling. Essentially, uh, I'm a commercial photographer. That's what I do most of the day is shoot food, you know, uh, food, beverages, drinks. That's kind of what I specialize in. So. I also shoot people, architecture, but really my focus is on food. Um, kind of found food photography through acting. I, uh, I had spent like eight years when I turned 17 um, in California and did uh, a fair amount of work out there as an actor. Um, but really I found that I love being behind the camera and that's kind of my happy place. So, um, <clears throat> With food photography, you know, it's the barrier to entry is not that big, you know? Um, so really, you, you need four things, and we're gonna talk about those four things today. So, four things you need to know to become a food photographer. Maybe not even need to know, but just need to have. Um, number one, gotta have a camera. I think that goes without saying. If you don't know that, you probably need to do a little bit more research <laughs> because you can't take any pictures without a camera. Um, now, what kind of camera? Well, that can vary. You have your iPhone, you have your DSLRs, you have your medium formats, you have um, iPad even, some people use, I think, if you're just a, a vlogger, blogger, and whatever, and uh, wanna do, you know, just stuff for the internet. Really, DSLR is kinda the happy place that a lot of people live nowadays. Um, medium formats, although they make amazing images, with the technology that's out now, uh, the resolution on some of these DSLRs is insane. My usual camera, the Nikon D850, I mean, it's almost 50 megapixels, you know, which is, it's more than you need in most situations. Um, there's gonna be times if you're a professional photographer that you need that extra resolution. Um, if you're doing large scale prints, they're gonna be viewed up close. Or for instance, I also had a request once if we would be able to uh, shoot super wide on this entire scene with a little vignette set up and the idea was that after the fact they'd go crop into you know little setups and um, be able to use each one of those as an image itself so cropping in obviously reduces your resolution um, so the large sensor there would make sense um, a lot of people also just want to the, uh, the medium format look if you will um, undeniably, it's beautiful. You know, you get super shallow depth of field, um, the details, the, the variation in the color that you get, the subtleties that they pick up. It's just, it's hard to match. DSLRs honestly come pretty close though, if you go with the top notch one. All this to say that there's a lot of options out there within that world. I kind of don't recommend going with iPhones or, or, you know, iPads. I mean, if you're just starting out and you can't afford a camera, I get it because everyone's going to have a phone and almost any phone nowadays is going to have a camera um, that's going to let you take some photos. But the problem is they're almost all super wide angle lens and wide angles tend to distort. Um, and it's just for, for legitimate food photography, it's not the best look. So really, if you have a couple hundred bucks, even, I mean, nowadays you can buy a DSLR, um, Consumer grade, not something you'd use on professional shoots, but if you're just trying to get started and you just want to learn, you can pick something up for a couple hundred bucks and it's going to make a great image. You know, um, throw a decent lens on there and you're in business. 
Now, when we talk about lenses, that's a whole nother conversation, and we can have another video specifically talking about lenses. But my recommendation, if you're just getting started, trying to learn, grab one lens. Um, something that's gonna be a little bit more affordable is like a 50 millimeter, and that's gonna be a pretty good focal length just to get started. There's definitely gonna be times when, you know, you wanna compress the background more, so you want a longer lens. Um, or you may want more drama, and in that case, a wider lens, when you push up closer to the image, it's gonna make whatever you're shooting, say it's a burger. If you, if you push up close to it on, you know, 35, 24 even, it's, it's gonna be really dramatic. Honestly, probably too dramatic for most applications, um, but it, it may, you know, you may wanna experiment with that. But if you're just getting started, like I said, just go with one lens, go with a 50 millimeter, that's gonna be plenty. That's what I did, at least. If you've got another idea, great, go for it. So with your camera, obviously, number two, you're gonna need a computer because you're gonna wanna edit these images. I recommend Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. Those two programs together will give you everything you need to create some really nice uh, photos and really get started learning these professional retouching programs. There's also Capture One, which I use sometimes. Um, it's great as well, it's just a little bit different. And I think for me, I learned on Lightroom. Lightroom is what I use to tether uh, when I'm shooting in studio. Even on location, I normally tether. Um, tethering is essentially you just hook the camera directly up to the computer. So instead of shooting to like an SD card or a CF card, you're just shooting straight to the computer's hard drive or external if you're using that. Um, and it runs through whatever program you're using. In this case, it would be Lightroom and you see the image pop up on screen. You get the full size screen of the computer. You can add in real time a few little edits, tweaks, you know, curves, etc. Um, and it's just, I mean, for any professional application, it's like, it's the way to go. Your client's not gonna wanna look on the back of your monitor, or I'm, I'm sorry, on the back of your screen. They're gonna want a computer to look at, especially nowadays in COVID, you know, you, you probably want at least two monitors if it's a small crew even, because you just want one for you, and maybe stylists, y'all can maybe share safely. Um, and then you want one for the client. And honestly, nowadays too, you're gonna want uh, a Zoom link set up so that you can share remotely. But we're getting off track, this is just getting started. So a computer with Photoshop and Lightroom. Tether to Lightroom or import from your card if you're not tethering. Do a few little tweaks and then finalize your photos in Photoshop. It's daunting at first. You're gonna be looking at it and it's gonna seem like a different language, um, but really just getting in there and playing around, you'll learn your own workflow. There's there's plenty of videos. Maybe I'll do one on how I retouch, but um, that'll help you get started at least. But really, it's just about experimenting and finding what works for you. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of retouchers out there cringing right now at what I'm saying, but the reality is that's how I got started and it's worked out for me. Um, and you'll learn what you're doing wrong. You'll learn better ways to do things, but uh, just dive in, you know, um, figure out the features, figure out what look you like to your photos. Um, make sure you shoot raw so that you can have as much latitude within the image later to pull back some highlights that maybe you blew out, you know, open up some shadows if you underexposed. Um, and put your camera on me on manual. <laughs> Please put your camera on manual. Do not use aperture priority, shutter priority. It's I understand in some you know dynamic situations you you are confident and you want to use one of these settings to make sure that you at least have a decent exposure. But they all have fallbacks. Manual really lets you learn your camera, learn how to expose. Um, takes a little bit of time, but that's just that's what I recommend. Um, I'm sweating, it's hot. I had to turn my AC off so that the sound would be at least halfway decent and I'm in Texas, it sucks. Anyways, number three. What is number three? Tripod. <laughs> Getting started, you need a tripod. Um, why do you need a tripod? I can't I just hold my camera? No, you need a tripod. I'm sorry, that was rude. That was rude. You need a tripod because most likely when you're starting, you're gonna be using natural light. Um, this is the biggest reason. There's tons of benefits you can get from a tripod, but natural light is amazing. It creates, you know, very natural look, um, but it has its limitations. You need a tripod for natural light because sometimes you have to slow your shutter speed down. If your aperture is where you want, you're losing detail. If you open up anymore, uh, you know, your depth of field's gonna get too narrow, too shallow, then 
you need to slow your shutter speed because you don't want to boost the ISO and start degrading the image. So slowing down your shutter speed, but at a certain point, you're going to start to get some motion blur. Um, and hand holding isn't an option. Even cheap tripods sometimes aren't an option because just the mechanical motion of that shutter opening and closing can be enough to shake and introduce enough motion blur to essentially make that image unusable. Um, I kind of cheaped out when I first bought my tri my first tripod and uh, I was kind of surprised sometimes I would get back and I'd be like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I didn't think I was dragging that much. And then it's like a blurry image and it may not be blurry, but it's just not going to be crisp, you know? And when you zoom in, you'll, you'll notice a little bit of blur and you're like, okay, that's why. So invest in something decent. Again, if you're just getting started, do what you can, but the better the tripod, the better your chances of getting a crisp image. And it's just, it'll last longer too. You know what I mean? You won't have to upgrade. So there's positives and negatives to both. Just get something to support your camera though. Number four, you need some sort of bounce card. Okay. So with natural light, with any light source, you're going to have your key, right? It's going to be coming in. That's where you're getting the majority of your light, filling the scene, lighting your subject, and then you're going to have a downside. So, um, like if you look at my hand right now, right? Like, let me see. So this is your key side and this is your downside. I have white walls in my studio, so there's actually a decent amount of fill anyways. Um, but if there wasn't, you'd have a white card that you could bring in and it'd fill those shadows. These are super cheap. You can get them from Michael's or um, Fry's for like four bucks a piece, I think. Uh, they're gonna have like a, it's like a two by three piece or something. Um, and it's gonna have a white side and a black side. It's like poster board, craft board. Uh, that's all you need to get started. Get that with a couple of clamps. Um, pick them up from Home Depot that you can, you know, set on your surface and it'll just be a support for your card. And really, to get started, that's kind of all you need. Now, like we talked about earlier, as you get better and, and you start to become a quote unquote professional looking for work, you're going to want to get a little bit better gear. The gear list goes on and on, and we can talk more about that later. But for just getting started, the reality is like, you don't need the biggest and baddest system out there. You know, you just need something decent that you can learn with and become confident with. Because I, I feel like a lot of people, you know, something I, I, I hear a lot is like, well, yeah, but if I had that camera, I could make a really nice photo too. And that's not true. Like, give a professional a cheap camera and they're going to be able to make a nice shot. Whereas if you give a novice or somebody who just doesn't know photography a professional camera, one, they're probably not going to know how to work it. And two, it doesn't matter because if you can't really just put the basics in place to create a nice image, the biggest and baddest camera in the world is not going to help you out. You know, you have to have your fundamentals down um, and you don't need a lot of money to do that. So um, anyways, I hope I hope this video has been a little bit informative. Um, sorry, it's rushed. Sorry, the quality is not great. If this becomes an ongoing thing. We'll up our game. Uh, I'll get someone to help me out and, you know, get the quality a little better. But for now, thank you for being here. Please let me know in the comments what you want to hear about, um, suggestions for things you want to learn, things you want to know, behind the scenes, what kind of content do you want to see? I, I really just want this to be a, uh, I don't know, a positive force today. So um, this is all for you guys. Let me know what you want to see and we'll make it happen. Thank you. All right, talk to you soon. Oh, next video we do, I think is gonna be natural light and how to use it to make beautiful food photos. So thank you guys. We'll talk to you soon.